Amen. Praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Can we please be seated? So today we want to continue from the Romans chapter 10. Amen. Let's pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Father, there is no other God like you, O oh God. Father, we pray today that you can come and give us insight of what your servant Apostle God tried to tell us through your word, O oh God. Come and open our heart, O oh God, for us to receive that your word, O oh God. For you said that your word that you sent out will always go and accomplish that that was meant to do. I will not return back to you for it. Father, we pray that your word will return back to you for in our life, O oh God. Father, may your word transform us and make us to be the people that you want us to be. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. amen and amen and amen. So today we will continue from the Romans chapter chapter 10. Amen. amen. And so today we're gonna go by precept by precept. Amen. So I'll start, I'll read one to, to four, and then I will share from the other. Amen. So Romans chapter 10, verse 1. Paul says, Brothers, my heart desire and prayer to God for them is that they may be saved. Two, for I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to the knowledge, for being arrogant of righteousness of God and seeking to establish their own, they do not submit to God's righteousness, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. Amen. So you, we can notice that the few things here what Paul says is this. Israel in verse 2, he says they have a zeal for God but without knowledge. And then he explains the verse 3. Just like your Bible says, my Bible says, for they have been arrogant of righteousness of God and seeking to establish their own righteousness. So therefore they, they refuse or they reject to submit to God's righteousness, you see. So Israel have a zeal, they are very passionate people, and they have what they have a zeal to serve God, but they lack the knowledge of God. Amen. The Bible says, without knowledge, my people perish, you see. So what Paul is saying here is this, Israel have this passion, but then again they have the knowledge because of their arrogance. You see, they do not submit to God's righteousness. So this statement by Paul, I will guarantee you, if I made that statement here, it will not be popular. Amen? Amen. Paul made that statement to the Jewish people, it's not popular to them because all of us, what do we have in common? We have what they call pride. Amen. Nobody wants to be tell that actually they don't know. You see, and that's a problem with humanity. You see. So Paul tried to address this. You can see why Paul went into trouble with them many times. Because he actually tells them the things they don't want to hear. You see. Because pride is the only thing that can make you to do what not to submit under the authority of God. Pride, I think, is gonna make a lot of people make their way to hell. Because when you have pride, there's no way you're gonna submit to the authority of God. If you have pride in you, you ask yourself, what is the first thing God said in the life of Lucifer? The Bible says what? Pride. When Eve went to God and know the knowledge of good and evil, it's not about the tasty fruit, it's about what? Pride. Because the Bible says what? He wants to be like God. You see, let me ask you your life, are you tempted to be like God? If that's the case, that means pride has already been found in you. And when pride finds in you, God is going to distance himself from you. Amen? The same way God distance uh, if and Adam, the same way God kicked devil down, he was a funny angel, you see? And because pride, iniquity was to what? Find in him. So if you want to arouse God's anger, let God find pride in you. Amen. And I pray that will not be the case because the Bible says what? They lack, they lack community, they lack knowledge because what? The basic problem with the, with the, with the 
Israel is they didn't submit to the God righteousness because why they, this indicate they want to do what? Have their own righteousness, you see, and that is what they call pride. And the second problem with the, with the Israel is this they want to earn God's righteousness by doing works, you see, but forgetting that the righteousness God gives is not by doing works, you see. The Bible tells us it's by faith, amen. amen. So, the righteousness in my life, in your life, for us to do what? Not to go the same way as the Jewish people did, you see. We know that God bestows righteousness. Do you know that God bestows righteousness on people? Amen? Amen. Because it is a gift that you don't have to earn it, you see. Paul, Paul dealt with this issue in the Romans 3, verse 21 to 22. He says, this is what Paul says, but now righteousness of God has been revealed, has been manifested, amen, to faith in Christ Jesus for all who do what? Believe. He didn't say for all who do what? Amen. He said for all who believe. And if you, if you also have the Bible also say that righteousness of God comes to all who believe based on what? God bestowing that righteousness on you. Amen. But Israel, instead of what? They insisted of what? Making their own righteousness, trying to work out righteousness instead of actually relying on God's righteousness that God bestowed on the people who actually submit him to his own authority. Amen. So that is the only way we can obtain the righteousness of God. So in verse 4, Paul also continues saying that for Christ is the end of the law, for the righteousness to everyone who believes. Amen. So what does Paul mean? Christ is the end of the law. You see? So what does what does he try to kind of tell me and you today? You see? Because if you look at in the life of Israel during those days, people want to do things. I can guarantee you one thing, nobody wants to. Sometimes if you meet people, you probably like something, they don't want to take it. Do you know why? Because human beings are being built to do what? To do something, then you can go back and say, okay, this is what I am. And then you can justify yourself, you see. But the Bible said that God do what? Bestow righteousness on those who do what? Humble themselves, amen? Those who will come and he give it to you, amen? And Israel stumbled in this matter. Amen. Because Paul also continued to say the law is finished for a believer. What is the law finished in the life of a believer? The law is finished in your life because why? You are acting based on obedience to the word of God. You are not acting to impress God. You are not acting to show God that you can be able to do it. You see? Because all of us know that none of us can be able to do what to keep the law. Amen. So in this sense, Christ is the completion of the law. He completed the law of what? Righteousness. To who? To those that believe in him, you see? And I hope today, all of us here today, realize that our hope and our heart desire to do what? Is to obtain the righteousness that God bestowed on Pastor Peter, on Sister Lee, on Sister Deva, on me, or to anybody who is here. We cannot work it out. The Bible says what? He bestowed it unto you. Amen. It is a gift that you receive by what? By faith. Amen? Amen. And we know that Israel tried all the possible means to do what? To obtain this righteousness by doing things, you see? So it's, it's, they are not different with the Christians today. Many Christians today are trying to do what? To obtain the righteousness of God by works. And wish, if you try to obtain it by works, you cannot get it by faith. The two are mutually exclusive. If you try to obtain it by works, you cannot get it by faith. Then if you get it by faith, that means you did not earn it. Amen? And that is why today we are so happy to call ourselves well, Christians, you see? So also, let me personally emphasize more in this matter because Christ being the end of the law, you see, this statement applies not only to the Jews, but also applies to us today, you see? Because Christ was something that the Jewish people were looking forward to come. They were hoping for what? They were waiting for the Messiah. And because they were waiting for the Messiah, Christ, before Christ came to the Jewish people, God waited for so long with them to see a way whereby they are working in His own way. 
I don't know about you, my, my, grand, my grandfather was an idol worshiper. There's no way Christ, God, is going to send his son to the nation of God free with idol worshippers. Amen? And you can see God delay this system of what to send his own son. Why? Because the people of Israelite, the kind of way God called them prostitute. Why? Because they moved from God and moved to idol worshiping. So they are the one delaying the coming of what? Messiah. You see? And when Christ came, before Christ came, we know how God introduced sacrificial system. Starting from what? when Adam and Eve sinned, the Bible says when well, God sacrificed and them and covered them with what? With garment. So that was the first time the sacrificial system was set up. And that was all the sacrifice that Israel did, starting from the Old Testament, Old Testament before Christ came. Everything was pointing to Jesus Christ. Amen. And when Christ came, the Bible says he became what? The sacrificial lamb as well. You see? So there's no way you can obtain the righteousness apart from what accepting that what Jesus Christ has done at the cross of Calvary. You see? So Christ terminated all the whole law. That's what Paul said. Christ is the end. Christ terminated, terminated all the whole law. Same way by doing what? Cross, finishing it at the cross. You see? And for us today, for us to obtain that righteousness, we need to rely on the mercy of God based on what Christ has already done at the cross of Calvary. See? Romans chapter 3 verse 20 says that the Lord comes the knowledge of what? Sin. When the Lord comes sin, you have the knowledge that what? Sin is there. Uh, Romans 7 verse 7 also says that if had not been before the law, for the law, I would not have known what sin is, you see. And what I was telling this, I don't know if you have a look in the book of uh, Psalm 1 verse 1, there's something that's very interesting there. He said, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law he meditate day and night. Amen. So the first thing he says is what? Well, blessed is the man who does not walk with the sinners. So that's the first negative. The second one is what? Well, who do not stand? Amen. With the wicked. And the third one was, well, who do not sit down? So it's the three personalities that women may have. We walk, we stand, and we sit. So the first negative is this. If you start walking with the wicked people, you will not get the blessing of God. Amen. If you start standing with them, with their sin, the Bible says, you will not get the blessing of God. And then when you sit down with them, with the scoffers, those people like to warn people, then that means it is finished for you. Do you know why? It's going to be difficult for you to do what? To stand up. Because now you are sitting, you are well comfortable, just as you're sitting there, you sit. You sit and you feel more comfortable. And that is why the Bible says, what? Well, blessed is the man who meditates on the law. You see, the law is perfect. The law is sorry. The law is righteous. Amen? He said, meditate on need. He can, Pastor Lord, he cannot meditate enough on the word of God. Amen. Because when you start meditating, guess what? You have been blessed. Because now, you are acknowledging what the law says based on what Christ has already done. Because the law, from the beginning to the end, points to whom? Points to Jesus Christ. Amen. So that means we are meditating on what Christ has already done for me and for you. Amen. You also put it in this way. When you go and say, doctor, what do you do? You think God of Jesus Christ will start giving you pills? No. The wisdom thermometer to do what? Put it in your tongue and to diagnose it like a wrong rap test to see that what is your problem. You see? Before it can do what? Prescribe you the medicine. Prescribe you the cure. The same way that's what the law is. The law shows you what you look like in the mirror, tells you how sinful we are as people. What is the basic problem with humanity? It's not coronavirus, it is sin. Amen? And that's what the Lord does. Not point at you, your sin, and then also the Bible diagnoses your, your sickness and tells your sickness is, is sin. And the only way for you to get cure is by what? By Christ, by the by, by, by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible says that his special blood that we are the word, that is who we are here. Amen. So if you go on the on the same place in Romans, Romans chapter chapter 10, verse 5 to 13, Paul also emphasizes more about the righteousness of God. It's only obtained by what a genuine faith. 
So this is what he said in verse 5. For Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law, that a person who does the commandments shall live like them. You see? So this statement is being quoted from Apostle Paul from the book of what? Leviticus chapter 18, verse 5. He said, this is what he said. You shall therefore keep my statutes, God speaking, and my, and my rules. If a person does them, they shall live by them. I am the Lord. I am the Lord, you see. So this is what God says in the Old Testament. So as you can see, everything has been started from the Old Testament. And then I'm coming to what? Coming to the New Testament because he says, if you keep the law, God declares you righteous. In the Old Testament, if you can keep all the law, God declares you righteous, you see. But he's also saying the person who does them shall also live by them. So you have to listen. He said, well, keep the law, you will live by it. So there's no dispute in the Old Testament and coming to the New Testament. Because we know when the, when the scribes and the Pharisees are just private, what is the biggest, what is the greatest commandment? What does Christ say? He said, love your God with all your heart, amen, with your mind and with your soul, with your strength. And he also said the second one is what? Love your neighbor as you love yourself. So you see, you can say, God put God first, put your neighbor, and then you be in the text or that. And also this emphasize what Jesus Christ also says in the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 17. He says, do not think I have come to abolish the law. You see? Or the prophet, I have not come to abolish them, but to do what? To fulfill them. You see? And when you talk about the fulfillment of the law, do you know that the law still applies? Many countries use the law that been given to Israel right today. Amen. Because the Bible says what well, the Lord is holy. But what the Bible is trying to explain to you here is this. If you go on keeping it on it, that's why just cannot keep it on it. You cannot stop. Because he said, if you live by it, guess what? You should live. If you can obey it, you should live. But we know it is impossible for any human being to do what? To keep the law. So if you have a look in the book of it, because I like what Paul says here. In the book of uh, Galatians 3, verse 10 to 13, he said, For all who lie on the works of the law are under a curse. So, in other words, if you lie to keep the law, you have put in yourself what? Under a curse. And he continues saying that God, he continues saying that a curse, you are under a curse, for God knows no one can keep all the law. For it is written, Curse be everyone who does not abide by all the things that is written in the book of the law and do them. So what this means is this. If you want to keep the law, that's great. You know, like Pastor Tosh about last time, he said what? Well, the law is greater dead. The law is what? Is dead because it's weak. Because it's like an old man. What the old man needs, I can guarantee you that if you take any old man who wants to go out for a walk, they will tell the old man to go for a walk. Because they are tired. You see, and that's what the Bible is trying to tell us that Christ has what retired the law. You see, because what he's trying to say here, so he said that in verse 11, he said, Now that it's evident that no one is justified before God by law, for the righteous shall live by what? No, he said by faith. He didn't say righteous shall live by what? He said by faith. So that is the only way for us to do what? To obtain the righteousness of God. You see. And it also continues saying that, but the law is not of faith, rather, the one who does them shall live by them. Christ redeemed us from the cause of the law by becoming a cause for us. You see, cause is everyone with his hand on the tree. Wow. So, cause is everyone with his hand on the tree. Who is the person that was hand on the tree? Christ was hand on the tree. So, what is he said to me and you, that is the good news. Amen. That's the good news of the Bible. Christ was hand on the tree and he became that cause for me and for you. So that well, we can obtain the righteousness of God. He said. Then Paul continued saying in the book of Romans 10 verse 6. He said, but the righteousness based on faith says that do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven. That is to bring Christ down. Or who is going, who will descend into abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the grave. So what Paul is pointing here to me and use this, the two things have to do what? 
combined with work, doing things and working. If you want to go and bring Christ down from heaven, he applies to what? Work. If you want to bring Christ down from the grave, he applies to what? Working. So God, the um, Apostle Paul tried to tell us to work. We don't have to actually do anything rather than work. Putting our faith on the finished work of Jesus Christ, is it? So Paul also says in verse 8, this Romans chapter 10 verse 8, But what does he say, Paul asked? The word is near you, in your mouth, in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. You see? So righteousness is what is by faith. It is not about effort. It's not about words. It's not about you trying to meet up a standard to kind of get yourself approved before God or to impress God. You see? Paul says, that is what? The word is close to you. What is close to you? He said, it's in your heart. With the heart one believes, and with the mouth one do one confesses, you see. And that is why I was to go on to say verse 9. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God has risen him from death, you will be do what? Will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, with the mouth one confess, he is what saved. I believe that every Christian should memorize this verse. Every Christian should do what? Memorize this verse. So in the future, someone meets you and I able to tell the person, this is how you get saved. Amen. If somebody has the zeal for God and then lack the knowledge of what, not realizing that you are being saved by actually believing it with your heart. And then confessing is these two human principle personalities is something that you need to do what do. For example, now who are the Bible story right there? I was saying this. If you look into your Bible, search for it. If for example, if you have problem with your health, look for it. What the Bible says, okay, healing is. What you gonna do? The same thing Paul says here. You believe it in your heart, not in your mind, because your mind will give you different kind of signals and then you believe it in your heart, and then what you have to do. You have to confess it. When Madame always said, let's pray. He said, open your mouth. It's biblical. It is, there's a principle here. God you cannot come down from heaven and open your mouth. You have to actually proclaim it. If you don't say it, you don't get it. You can sit down here. You can stand up. You can just keep quiet. You only do what? You are not doing yourself in heaven. Amen. Because it's a principle of God. You need to believe it in your heart and then do what? Confess it, you see? Mm -hmm. So verse 11 says, For the scripture says, Everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame, you see? And he continues saying that righteousness by faith is not about what? It's about trusting what Jesus Christ has done, you see? He didn't say, the scripture didn't say by working hard. He didn't say that. He didn't also say by fasting two times a week. He didn't say that. He didn't also say by praying five days a day. He didn't say that. He said by what? By believing. And that is the problem today. Most people want to do things before they, they can get themselves approved. Before the presence of God. That keep me that keep me in the bondage for many years. I'm talking from experience now. Amen. The only way for you to come, the Bible says, say, well, come as you are. Amen? Come as you are because the job is already been done. It's only done with once. Christ is going to come back again to come and do the job. The Bible says the second time is coming, it's coming to church. Amen? So it is already finished at the cross of Calvary. And all we need to do today is to do what? As a, as a church going Christian, as a believer is to do what? To actually believe that the job has already been, been done. Amen. So the problem that many people have today, I can guarantee you meet anybody today, tell them about God. The first thing they will give you is schools. Let me get my house in order. Do you know what that says? Let me make an effort to, to kind of approve myself before God if I come to church. And I guarantee you, most people will have this mindset. The Israelite people had it for many years. And they keep on stumbling over of the salvation of God. If you have that mindset today, guess what? Most people have that mindset. That's why you never see them in the church. It's like you want to tell yourself, let me get well, then I go and see a doctor. Mm -hmm. Let me get here, 
than before I can see a doctor. All of us here, this is a hospital place. Amen. We all have different kind of sickness. And then once we come in here, this place will automatically work. The presence of God is here and we get healed. You see? So it is all about water to work mindset, you see. So we should move away from what trying to kind of approve ourselves before God. God doesn't want that from you. And then he wants you to come the way you are. Because at the end of the day, he is the one who's gonna say, I bestow righteousness on you, I bestow righteousness on you, I bestow on this person, you see. And it is not by war. It is a gift that nobody can boast about it. Amen. So Paul continues saying in the book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 33. He said, Israel will pursue a law that will lead to righteousness, did not succeed in reaching the law. Is it not painful? They are pursuing with their own passion. They are very serious. Amen. It's like somebody serious about God. But actually they want to obtain it by works. But the Bible said, what well, they did not even obtain it. He said, you also say, why? Because they did not pursue it by faith. That is why. If you are serious about God, but if you don't have faith, it's pointless. And then, the same way you make prayer, or even meet somebody in the street, you make prayers, confession with them, and then they do not apply that prayer with faith. It is what it's still what pointless. And then, and he continues saying that. They have stumbled over the stumbling stone as it is written. The prophecy of Isaiah, Behold, I am laying in a Zion a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense. Whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. You see? So, Apostle Paul, you see, there you have the privilege of having the word of God. Apostle Paul, what did the Apostle Paul do? Apostle Paul have to go and research to see the benefit that we are benefiting today. He went back to the one to recite the Old Testament and he said to them that Israel were expecting a Messiah. But when the Messiah came, they didn't do one. Well. They didn't notice him. Why? Because they stumbled over it. He said, the same today for many Christians are stumbling over their salvation based on what they're trying to work it out. And then, they try to work it out. It's actually, actually believing it by faith. Amen. So, why is that Jesus Christ is offensive? I agree. I mean, do you agree that Jesus Christ is offensive? Personally, I agree. Amen. Because the Bible says that it's offensive because to the woman pride. Amen. It's offensive to the woman pride in a sense whereby most people want to do what? Pride themselves into their own Salvation, amen. Why? Because why? Because they stumble over on the stone. And Jesus Christ, the Bible says Jesus Christ is the stone of what? Offensive to those. You see, I like the way Peter put it in first Peter chapter 2, verse 8. He says, Jesus Christ is a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word of God. Amen. Are you disobeying the word of God today? You are stumbling over the stone. Because the Bible says, as I prophesied to them, and they are waiting for him to come, a savior, and they know he's coming. But when he came, they miss it. They went different direction. Why? Because they didn't believe. Unbelief. Instead of obeying the word of God, you see? And I like the way, <laughs> let me put something about the Pharisees. I think some of us here do some Pharisees in our life. Amen. Do we agree? Because sometimes you cannot appreciate the grace of God until you have the Pharisees. Because the Pharisees are the ones like, yeah, you do this, you do that. They are like the commandos. You know, they are the sergeant like that. They say you do this, like giving you condition. You know, even the things God didn't tell them to do, they even make up their own rules. That's why the Bible said, well, they tie so much influence on people, which just why I said they couldn't even use their own finger to do one. To lift it up. You see? So you need to appreciate the grace of God. Amen? And many people today, Christians are doing what? Doing that mistake. And that's why Apostle Paul encouraged me in the book of Romans 10, verse 12. He says, There is no decision between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is, is Lord for all, bestowing 
riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Let me ask you, how do you get saved? How do you get saved? He said by you were calling the name of the Lord. And that is why when you call the name of the Lord, you are calling based on what? On his characters, on his promises, on his principles. Amen. You remember when John says in the book of John, John 1, and he says that not all of us are children of God. Only those who receive Jesus Christ and his name have been given the right to be called one. The children of God. Not children born of mother and father of blood, but being more of what? Born by the Spirit. Amen? And that is what Paul also tried to explain to us here, I see. And then verse 14, Paul going to ask, How then will they call on him who they have not who have not believed? On how would they believe on him who they have not heard? And how and how then we hear without someone preaching to them? Verse 15. And how will they be preached unless someone is sent? As it is written, how pitiful are the feet of those who preach the goodness. You see? So Paul currently was observing things about what? The good news about Jesus Christ. He said, how can someone hear the good news about Jesus Christ if nobody didn't go and do what? Preach. You see? And that is why I had a conversation with pastor Pastor is the pastor of the church. Amen? His job is to do what? Is to pastor us. You see? We, as the children of God, every one of us here have been mandated to do what? To preach the good news. You see? You can say that's not for you. Actually, it's for you. Why is it for you? The Bible says, well, get yourself ready. When someone tells, asks you what is the hope that you have for you can help you to do what? To tell the person the hope that you have. You see? So, most people today calling themselves pastor, I cannot disagree, you know? To be a pastor, you need to have congregation that you are pastoring. You see? But every one of us here have been called to do what? To be evangelist. You need to go out and preach the gospel news. You are saved, so don't be selfish. You need to go and also do what? To give other people the information they need to know so that they can get saved. And the Bible says, while you are doing that, he said, your faith is beautiful. And it is a beautiful thing in the eyes of God for you to do what? To evangelize. Amen? And I encourage every one of us here to kind of tap into it, you see? Because Paul says, some are giving what? To be apostles, some to be teachers, some to be pastors, some to be evangelists. You see? So that means I can find out if that gift Christ said have given to you. You can find it out. Let me ask you, what is the thing that you have passion to do in the house of the Lord? Do, is your passion to come here, clean up the place, when we finish and put everything on that? Continue to, is your passion is to tell somebody about Christ? Then that is how you need to go and do what? Tell other people about Christ. And while you are doing that, you discover that that is your calling. Amen? I have that conversation with Sister Deva. She wants to do what? To kind of read the word of God and also pray to people. The same thing goes to you. They want, they want to also hear people. But there's no way if you don't get up to actually put it into practice, then how can you discover it? Amen? So that is why the Bible is here to encourage me and you to do the work, to tap into it. Amen? And also, Paul continued to say in the book of Hebrew, the writer said, For the good news came to us, just as to them, but the message they had, they did not benefit them because why? Right? They did not unite that message they have with one, with faith. Now, let me tell you something. You can come here and hear the word of God. If you don't mingle the word of God that you have with faith, it will be what? It will not be fruitful in your life. Amen. Just like as I said, if you pray, you do not have faith. You will not do what? Be fruitful. Amen? Amen. When Jesus Christ prays, sometimes he just make a short prayer. Guess what? Because he has faith that his Father in heaven is going to hear him. And that's why in the book of Matthew 11 to 2 say what? Have faith in God. You must do what? Have faith in God. 
Because at the end of the day, the gospel, you can hear the gospel as much as you like. Hearing is a good thing, but actually believing is another thing. Amen. And that's why he says, the, the writer in Hebrew says, oh, they hear the message, but it didn't benefit them. And there's something that they point out that they didn't unite it with what? With faith. Amen. You can come here today, hear the word of God, but if you don't join it together with faith, it's of no value to you, you see. And verse 18, Paul said that, But I ask, have they not heard it? Indeed they have heard it. The voice has gone out all over the earth, and their words to the end of the world. And in verse 19 he said, But I ask, the Israel did not understand. First Moses says, I will make you jealous of those who are not of nation, with a foolish nation, and I will make you angry. So what Paul is quoting in Deuteronomy, Amen. He said that Jesus Christ made Israel jealous by meeting me and you Gentiles who are foolish nation means who didn't know God, the people who didn't know God. Amen. To make them jealous. Let me ask you today. If you are not serving God, God is going to take somebody else to make you do what? To be jealous. To show you that that is the thing that you actually need to actually do. You see? And that is what Paul trying to do. Explain here, and I can guarantee Israel they will be very mad because they were chasing Paul, go to preach the good news to the Gentiles because of that. You see, but they were being won. But you can see their stubbornness is a benefit to us today, amen. And that is why we are here as a children of God, amen. But I'm already <laughs> giving me a few minutes, okay? So, the few things I want to Bring here under the conclusion is this. I say it in this way. I see it as a marriage. You know, when two people marry, the Bible says they became one. And when they became one, what's going to happen in the marriage? I can step on your feet, you can step on my feet. And they're going to be what crashes. You see? And we try to do what? Everyone try to make it out by themselves. Which is gonna be impossible for you. Because the Bible says, Well, husband, love your wife. It is a commandment, it's not for negotiation, it's not for debate, it's something that you say, Well, love your wife. And what did he say to the wife? Honor your, your husband. I can guarantee even if you are looking at looking at me like tiger. You see? <laughs> because he said, Honor him, submit to him. And many Christians today find it difficult to do what to submit. And that is the same thing with the Israelite. And submit, they refuse to submit. The one who started the Bible said, Well, they were ignorant. They lacked knowledge because what? They didn't submit to the righteousness of God. They tried to work it out by themselves. And that is the same today. Are you submitting to your husband? Yes. Amen. He said, I'm only one person here say yes. Do you understand it? Are you submitting to your husband? Oh, you see? Are you loving your wife? Ah, Amen. Is that a question to me? I'm loving my wife. Amen. And that is the key point in this message. Love your wife. Submit to what? To your husband. And if you don't submit to your husband, the Bible says what? You are trying to do what? To work out your own salvation of your own righteousness. And he said you lack knowledge. Amen. And I hope one what is enough for us. It's a tough one, but at the end of the day, you cannot go it alone. Your heart can never be happy or in a good state if you don't submit. Either way you like it, take it. Your salvation, you cannot save yourself. Who save us? Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, what he did, he submit to the will of the Father. And the Bible said, well, after he submitted, what did he do? He lifted his name above every other name, that in the name of Jesus Christ, every name will do what? Must bow. And every tongue must do what? Confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So the glory to the God, the Father in heaven. Amen. Amen. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen.